We have Indus Valley Civilization, the cradle of civilization in the world, and we have TGS, King Global School, the cradle of modern civilization. This is the only school that goes about education in a truly globalized manner. You represent a type of civilization that existed in Indus and Harappa 3,500 years ago. You represent a type of civilization, a global civilization in today's world. And this is the connection. And this is beautiful that Indus International School is playing host to TGS. And 2005, 3,500 years ago, that's 1,500 years before Christ, and 2013 have come together. I think this is inevitable, and I think the old and the new will blend, create the ultimate leaders of the future. Am I right? I think in the, in the students are agreeing, the TGS students are quite unsure. Oh. <laughs> They're still thinking about the big red zero. <laughs> so that is one connection. Alan has asked me to talk about a different connection, Bhutan and India. Now, many of you TGS students have been to Bhutan. How many of you have been to Bhutan? Oh, all of you. Almost all of you. Yeah. Now, Bhutan is a country back in the Himalayas. It's nothing but mountains. In the north, we have huge mountains, very tall mountains. It's very difficult to cross. In the south, our border with India, we were told the way we demarcated our border. I hope people be, were joking. They better be joking. We were told that people went up to the mountains, rolled big boulders from the top of the mountains. Let it roll freely and where the rock stopped would be the border. <laughs> because we don't have any plains. We have the Gangetic plains, the Great Plains of India, and the moment the plain ends and the mountain begins, that's the border. But that area was dense jungle, absolutely dense jungle. If the mighty tiger didn't get you, the no less mighty mosquito will get you. <laughs> I heard all the stories, but those mosquitoes were different because they would kill you. So when you were, if you try to get into Bhutan through those jungles, you are asking to be killed. Either by the tiger or by the mosquito. And if they didn't get you, you had us barbarians. <laughs> you would be there with the poison tipped arrows to make sure nobody entered what we believe, what we believe to be paradise. You say value. We want to protect, we want to protect paradise. In the north, our northern border is nothing but mighty high Himalayas, and we have the highest, the tallest unconquered mountains in the world and we want to keep it that way. But those mountains, although they were impenetrable, we made laws into Tibet. And our interaction until 60 years ago, 70 years ago, was with the north. In the south, we had this thick forest protect us. The British couldn't penetrate. They tried. They couldn't penetrate. They'd come in into this paradise in ones and twos. And they wanted to set up and expand their British empire into Bhutan. But that forest infested tigers and mosquitoes prevented them from entering. The north, we had high Himalayas. And in Tibet, 
hear the news, the great Tibetan plateau was there. It's a big desert at 5,000 meters above sea level, and most of that is in uninhabited.
And partly because of that, he became recognized in British India. He was also knighted by British India. So even at that time, there was a slight connection with British India. But in the 1950s, our third king, so it was the first king's grandson who decided to open the doors to the south. So what he did in 1954 is that he traveled to India and he met Indian leaders. And he invited somebody called Jawaharlal Nehru to visit Bhutan. And Jawaharlal Nehru visited Bhutan in 1958. Now Jawaharlal Nehru was the first Prime Minister of Independent India, the first Prime Minister of India. His daughter is, or was, Indira Gandhi, who became India's, one of India's most successful Prime Ministers. And Indira Gandhi's son there was Rajiv Gandhi, who became a very successful Prime Minister, although his life was cut short by an assassin. Rajiv Gandhi's son is Rahul. Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi is the Vice President of the Indian National Congress. He is a member of parliament and many think that he will also one day become Prime Minister. He is about 42 years old. But in the meantime, his mother, Sonia Gandhi, is the chairperson of the UPA. That is the party that is governing India. And that is a party that is led so, the connection now is when Jawaharlal Nehru, at the invitation of the third king, Jigmi Doji Wangchuk, went to Bhutan. How did he travel to Bhutan? Horseback and on yak bag. There are iconic photographs of Pandit Nehru riding a yak entering into Bhutan. So, he entered into Bhutan and he had with him a young lady by the name of Indira Gandhi. And they stayed in Bhutan and Jawaharlal Nehru fell in love with Bhutan. And in, in Bhutan, he said, and he laid down the policy, India's policy towards Bhutan. Because in 1958, in Paro, in Paro, in front of this huge power zone, magnificent power zone, he told the people of Bhutan, some may think India being a large country, and Bhutan being a small country, the former will take advantage of the latter. And he said, no, Bhutan and India are equal, and will always be equal. We will work together, we will be friends, we must be friends. We will be equal friends. This was his promise. Nehru's promise in 1958. And this promise has guided the relation between India and Bhutan. After that, Indira Gandhi visited Bhutan many times. And Indira Gandhi's counterpart is his was His Majesty the King, the fourth king, third king's son. Fourth king. The fourth king became king when he was 16. And he ruled Bhutan for 34 years. When he retired, when he abdicated, he was only 52 years old. Today he is 57. At 52 years old, he gave Bhutan a constitution, he gave Bhutan a democracy and said, okay, I've done my job, I'm going to retire. And he gave the throne. He gave the throne to his young son, who was 32 then, and he gave the powers to the people of Bhutan through democracy. That's the next connection. A lot of our constitution was derived from the wisdom of our king. Many of the experts came from all over the world. Some of them came from India. Two, 
conduct elections is not easy. India is the largest democracy and in India they know how to conduct elections. It's very difficult, very complicated and the use of electronic voting machines here, elections have been brought down to an art. India has had to conduct two rounds of elections. So politically, we have seen the transition where an absolute king worked with British India to an absolute king who worked with Nehru to an absolute king who worked with Gandhi and that absolute king worked and prepared Bhutan to work with democratic India. So today we are a democracy. So politically, this is the connection. Economically, earlier all our trade was with the North. But like I said, the North is actually one big, barren, high roof of the world. It's like a plateau. And very naturally, Bhutan opens up to the south, to India. That's where the plains are, that's where the people are, that's where the resources are, that's where the seaports are. And it only became natural that we open up to the south. And today, more than 70% of our trade is in India. Economically, only because of the forest that prevented us from engaging with India earlier. But now economically, we are inextricably linked with India. Culturally, when you go to Bhutan, you see us very different. And this has indeed come from the north. Our whole culture, the way we live, the way we practice religion, the way we dress, the way we talk. They influenced heavily from Tibet. But remember, Tibet was influenced by India. So even culturally, there is a connection between India. Thank you very much.